Well, in books about influential Christians of this century, this 20th century, one name is always listed, Francis Schaeffer. He was born in 1912 in a suburb of Philadelphia in the United States called Germantown. His father was caretaker. Neither of his parents had any interest in any religion. And it was a poor home without one single book in it, he was later to write. While he was at high school, he became an open agnostic. When he was 17, he got a part-time job on a fish wagon, and then another part-time job teaching English of all things to an exiled white Russian count. And this gentleman said that he wanted to be taught English from a book of Greek philosophy, can you believe it? Well, this book of Greek philosophy started arising, arousing questions about the meaning of life in Schaeffer's mind. And so for answers, he decided he would read the Bible as well. And just through reading the Bible, in this six months period, he became a Christian. Without knowing anybody else with the same experience, he was born again spiritually into the family of God on the basis of Christ's work on the cross. He was now 18. And one day, he was going along the pavement in Germantown, and he saw a tent meeting going on. He wandered in, listened to this Italian-American preacher, and he heard the same things that he believed through his unguided reading of the Bible. Then came a series of dead-end jobs that gave him time to think and pray. And before long, he felt the call to enter the Christian ministry. Then it was 1932, and a local church sponsored a youth speaker with this subject, why the Bible is not God's word. During the discussion period that followed that speaker, Schaefer got up and defended the orthodox view of the Bible. And then an articulate young woman got up and gave a defense of scripture using the arguments of scholar J. Gresham Machen. And at the end, Schaefer went across to this Edith Seville, who turned out to be the daughter of former missionaries to China, and one thing led to another, and three years later they were married. We're now in 1935. Throughout the 1940s, Schaefer improved his education, and then in 1938 he was ordained minister in the Bible Presbyterian Church. Then there were a series of pastorates which were to shape his life's work. He discovered that simple truth that whatever a person's job or status in life, everybody who came to faith in Christ came the same way. The way he had done by simple faith in Christ alone. And then in 1943, he went as pastor of the church of his denomination to St. Louis where he developed an effective youth ministry, which gave him the first twinges of an interest in international youth work. The big turning point in his life really was 1947, when his church sent him on a fact-finding tour of war-ravaged Europe. Remember, Hitler had only recently been defeated at this time. In three months, he visited 13 countries. And by the time of his return to America, he was convinced that God was calling him to go to minister in Europe. So in 1948, the Schaeffers rented rooms in Lausanne and established an independent missionary outreach. In 1951, when he was 39, he went through a spiritual crisis. It's usually called in books his Hayloft Experience. There was a lack of spirituality in his own life. So pacing up and down on the hayloft of their chalet, he rethought his faith, going right back to that high school atheism. 
And he wrote afterwards, I walked, I prayed, I thought through what the scriptures taught. I reviewed my reasons for being a Christian, and I saw that they were totally sufficient, and that the personal God does exist, and that Christianity is true. And he saw then, too, that his personal relationship with God was to be a moment-by-moment -moment communion with the Lord, and that in future he must live solely by the power of the Holy Spirit. And a vision of a new evangelistic enterprise was formed in his mind by that hayloft experience. So in 1954, he turned his chalet into a center for people who were searching for spiritual direction. He and his wife called it l'abri, French for the shelter. And they made their needs about it known only to God. And before long, he honored what they did. Word spread. And over the years, many thousands of seeking people came to that library in Switzerland, and a very large proportion were converted to Christ. Schaefer preached, he answered questions, he penetrated Lausanne University with the gospel, he developed an apologetic in which he insisted that Christ is Lord of all life. And that includes art, music, politics, and so on. First, he didn't want to have his work taped, but somebody hid a microphone in a pot plant in front of him one evening, and the next morning everybody wanted to have a copy of the tape from last night. And that was the start of an international ministry, which eventually was to include three films, one of which, which explains his anti-abortion stance. Other libraries sprang up around the world, and they're all still going strong, including the one down at Lys, near Greatham in Hampshire. In his lifetime, he wrote 25 books, which have sold in their millions and have got translated into 20 known languages. A new one, actually, based on tape recordings of his expositions of Romans, got an extraordinarily good review in Evangelical Times, in October 1999. His theology was reformed, Presbyterian, but his influence spread right throughout the whole, the whole universal Christian church. He showed that the Bible has the answers. And when he died of cancer, age 72, in 1984, one of the major 20th century influences to Christ was removed to heaven. His legacy, not only his written work and the Libris, but the untold thousands who through him found Christ as their savior and their Lord of all life. He was a theologian. He was primarily a philosopher who taught a Christian worldview. But the man himself refused all of the titles than the fact that he was an evangelist. In fact, he combined a well-thought-out theology with a simple childlike trust in Christ. And that basic trust was evident in his final words as he died, his grace is sufficient for me.